Hi, how you doing? I'm doing freaking awesome. And I know you are, too, because I wouldn't be hanging out with you. <laughs> <laughs> it's been an interesting week, Francine. It has been an interesting week. Okay, well, tell I'm, me something that's awesome. interesting. I, I mean, I'm awesome. You're I, awesome. I We're all that. awesome. We don't always tap into our awesome, like, oh, you no, know, I, I mean, every still, day, but... <laughs> even if I have a really shitty day, I still feel, I, I, inside, I'm good. You know what I mean? I don't really ever look at myself on the inside and go, oh, I hate you. I don't do that shit. Good. Good. I could be you feeling, like, shit. complete negative, mm-hmm. like, you know what I'm saying? Like, because I was sick this week a little bit. And I still never looked at myself and went, oh, I hate you. You know, so, but I still don't like, you know, being sick. No, it's not fun. It happens. But what was funny, like, you kind of, I find shit and I just make it funny. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, one of the congestion medicines that I bought had, one one was a daytime medicine that you take a red pill, and one was a nighttime (laughs) medicine, you take a blue pill. I'm thinking to myself, this is like the matrix it's why would they do that like like it's kind of funny when you think about it like you know, yeah i guess I to keep a, you on track with I, colors i took a picture i was like it's like the matrix congestion medicine like people would probably buy it more if they had that on there because <laughs> it's kind of funny them the label and send it to them yeah so if i sound yeah. weird if i sound not myself that's probably why my, my voice is a little weird yeah well but I still feel good. You still inside. feel good. All right. Feel great on the inside. We should all stuff. we should always feel good inside. I mean, there's we all have moments, but you should always be able to tap into that. Always. Well, I think that you should just like yourself. Period. Yeah. Do you, you know? Okay. How many times do you give someone a compliment, or have you run across people that you say, "Hey, you look good," or? You know, like that shirt. Maybe I don't do that. It's <laughs> like, you, like it's a conspiracy. <laughs> like, they, oh, like uh, girls do this. Oh, I like your shoes in they, the elevator. They look at you like it's a conspiracy <laughs> after you tell them. Like you're mm-hmm. joking with them or something. Mm-hmm. Like you're the brother or sister that was trying to give them a compliment, but you're like, wait, why are they telling me that? Yeah, I see that a lot. Yeah, I mean, there's so many people that can't take a compliment. Or you tell them that they look good, and they go, I can't look good if they told me that. They think like that? Yeah. Yeah, I see or, that quite a bit, too. Or I like that shirt, or those shoes, or those jeans, and they'll downplay it and say, oh, I got that at, like, Target or something. Yeah. Or, I, or those are old. Or I got those so on sale. To, that's because they're so used to compliments. Uh, I think they, I mean, women do that the most, I think. You know what? They got to level it out. Let me tell you what women do. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you something that I see women do quite a bit in the last, like, <clears> six months. And I don't know who started this stupid ass thing. It's only in the last six months. It's pretty much, in, but it's pretty bad in the last six months. Okay. You get a group of women standing together, mm-hmm. taking a picture, and every single one of them has their hand on their hip. That's the power pose. That's really stupid. That's um, a lady named Amy Cuddy did a TED talk about four or five years ago that was like one of the most popular TED talks ever, and she came up with the power pose. Uh-huh. She didn't come up with it, but she started talking about it, and it got a lot of attention. And one of the power poses that she talks about is the Wonder Woman. I oh, see Wonder Woman is out right now. Maybe that's it. Um, I think this is complete bullshit. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> my, 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 she's sitting uh-huh. there talking. I'm like my 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 face is like. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just guessing. I'm just, you know. Yeah. Who knows what it is? I'm on so that, fed, my, my, I'm like monotonously looking at her, like, "Are you serious?" Because <laughs> I'm telling you right now, I don't Sudafed know. Who, will make you. I don't know who grouchy. came out with this. It's all hands on the hip. Is it just one hand or is it both? It's well, hopefully it's one. <laughs> Wonder Woman is both. That's really weird. <laughs> Wonder Woman is not real. Do y'all realize this? <laughs> Do y'all know that? She's still cool. I mean, she's Did a Did you thought. see the movie? I don't the movie's wanna, awesome. I don't need to see the movie. I'm cool. It's got, I mean, I'm not into the action figure stuff. And, yeah, but, I mean, it doesn't matter. But it, I it's mean, it's a cool movie. The, the thing about all these mythological things that y'all don't realize, that mm-hmm. I see, mm-hmm. the stuff that I watch, y'all don't watch. Like, the stuff on you Wonder right Woman. you right about that. <laughs> you no, know, the stuff on Wonder Woman's sword mm-hmm. is what I look at. At the end? No. 
during, during the whole thing. No, not the end of the movie. Like, the end of the sword, the, like, top, bottom of the sword. What? On the sword. On the sword. On, no, on all of these weird mythological, like, mm-hmm. superhero movies, every time you see a sword or some sort of, you know, weapon, yep. they have, they call them rune stones on it, mm-hmm. right? I'm looking at that because I know that, you know, the the real craziness behind the movie is is that it's not anything to do with the story. It has everything to do with the weapon. The weapon, what's on the weapon? There are. I I really am starting to believe that there are symbols that actually kind of subliminally mess with people, and I think that this is how they do it. Huh. And interesting. This is the one attack thing that is they all have in common. They all have um, what they call rune stones mm-hmm. on their weapons. Now, why in the hell would they have rune stones on their weapons? Well, how, why in the hell would you know that they even have a rune stone? I see it immediately because I've, stu- I've been studying it for a long time. Have you? What? Okay. Well, what struck this interest to just study the sword? Well, I mean, you look at I'm transformers. Mm-hmm. Every single Transformers movie had rune stones on the the just so happened to be the important thing of the movie. Like I remember um whenever it's supposed to be a guy thing. Well no, it's not a it's really not a guy thing. It's kind of a you know, I do see people every now and then like the the Dungeons and Dragons folk. Mm-hmm. You know, they probably know what this is cuz they see it all over their video game. Mm-hmm. But I really think that there is some sort of hidden objective with these rune stones because i remember i know Hmm. from studying this there's some sort of ancient magic that is adjusted with this Mm -hmm. and when you think about it when you are in a mode of this battle scene in wonder woman Hmm. since you brought it up Mm -hmm. it's really not one you know wonder woman is an alien Mm -hmm. think about that for a second she's an alien Mm -hmm. and she has a weapon that has ancient rune magic on it just so happens that the ancient rune magic just so happens to be allowing her to use another dimension that's cool it's not cool it's not it's not you you have to think about what you're doing when you see this i mean i don't want to take the love out of all this shit for anybody but at the same time you're opening yourself up to a power from outside of yourself hmm those inner, those outer dimensions, mm-hmm. you don't know what that is. Mm-hmm. And those outer dimensional portals mm-hmm. are with, they can be used through that rune magic. Mm-hmm. So when you start digging around and you look at this, mm-hmm. your children are literally opening up inner dimensionals because literally, and they're buying the products. The products even have the rune stones on it too. You don't believe me? Uh, the the number one I'm telling you Transformers has it Wonder Woman has it and I would I'm willing to bet money that the the Marvel movies have it too I have those it. are so popular now I know um in the new movie uh one where you know Optimus Prime is like yeah Nemesis Prime they call him mm-hmm. his sword is completely covered in rune rune stones spell this out you saying it's R U N E Okay. Now, what's really funny to me mm-hmm. is this. I mean, it, it looks like ancient Anakian. Mm-hmm. That's that's why I'm curious about it because I had to study Anakian to write the book. So when I start looking at that, yeah, it's not anything dealing with Anakian in today's world, and mm-hmm. nobody has a clue what it is. Mm-hmm. If people really knew what that was, I promise you they'd be questioning it. Hmm. They'd want to know why it's in my child's movie. Because I don't really believe for a second that that is not something deceptive towards humanity. You don't? No. Okay. Well, well think about it for a second. What is a Nakian? Mm-hmm. Well, why don't you explain it? Okay. In the 1600s, there was a man named John D. Yeah. John D. He lived in Europe. He was under the ruling of uh, of, of um, what's her name? Queen Elizabeth. Elizabeth the First. Elizabeth the First. 
there's a lot of strange things about Elizabeth I, especially when you dig deep into the research, you know, when she was a child. They don't know if it was really her or what. I mean, so you, you got a lot of weird shit going on at that time. Yeah. Well, John Dee was the first person ever to actually receive funding for science. Yes. In that sense, you know, because he had this huge library in England. Mm-hmm. And basically, he got to the point where he said he could not learn any more from books. So he set out to find people who know how to scry. Mm -hmm. And what they call scrying is people that can actually look at a rock and actually see symbols that form Mm -hmm. from another dimension. Now, Uh. you think that's crazy today, but, you know, realistically, they did this. It's so interesting they were looking into this This was in the 1600s. So he found a guy named Edward Kelly, who was a master scryer. Right. Who was also a swindler. But right. at the same time, he really was a master scry. It was pretty, you know, it was like literally, I guess, something yeah. he didn't think he, he knew he could do, or maybe he did. You never know. Right. So these two come who together. Al- who mm-hmm. also just so happened to be the person who n- knew how to use alchemy yeah. to create gold. Right. I think one of these two, I'm and not sure. died. Because he had that secret, because yeah. he would not give it away. We can talk about that like on a whole nother show, or maybe tap into it right now. But one of them but was... But I'm glad it's coming out, because the, yeah. you know, this is the history that you're looking at today in your superhero movies. Mm-hmm. And you have no idea. Mm-hmm. And your children are watching this. So, who is making that happen? That's what I'm curious about. Yeah. You know? Because when you look up John D, this is what I get pissed off about, because all these people who had all this inner hidden knowledge mm-hmm. to make gold and with alchemy, to um, understand what it means to mm-hmm. have sacred space, mm-hmm. to understand that there was a hidden language. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm missing the, the most positive part here. John D. wanted to learn just about anything he could possibly learn. Yeah. They considered him to be an occultist, you know, and when people hear that word today, they think of satanic cult, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and, and, and he was not like that at all. Mm-hmm. I think he was, um, him and Shakespeare may have worked on something together or maybe it's the other one. Well, I think, I think, I think that they, you might want to just they, fact check that one. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's something, there's something connected with them mm-hmm. too, but it's not, you know, it, it wasn't like they, you know, I'm sure they hung out a couple times, right. but it, it wasn't like they hanging so, out. So, they got together and they started writing with the angels, right? Well, the, the, it's not that they were writing with angels. Angels were actually Guiding teaching them. them. Okay. That's, that's John D. got into the point it, where basically he, he wanted to learn from God. Mm-hmm. He wanted to learn what, you know, information from God. Yes. And and that's that's how this happened. Basically two people come together and they were scrying and they came up with this language called Anakian. Okay. And the whole Anakian language, you know, pretty much came out through this series of interdimensional information that came out through these rocks. Mhm. The majority of that information that's probably why they call it rune stones. Mm-hmm. Because when you're scrying, it comes out on the rock, and it's it, it's like a rune, it's like a symbol. They come came out with a whole language of it. Now, I from doing the research, and I actually own, I had to buy his spiritual diary. Like, you know, it wasn't cheap. I bet it was interesting, though. Well, this is all stuff that I had to do to research the book. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, I mean, when I looked at all this stuff, I was like, wow. Yeah. You know? Now, after doing all the research... I think he was the first person that ever really did this. Yeah. And it was a learning experience for him. And I don't think all of it was legit. I think some of it was. But I think some of it was also what we know today as these these uh, these there are some dark deceivers out there mm. in those inner dimensions. And, mm-hmm. and I think that sometimes he was communicating with them and they were playing games. Mm. So he had to. He really had to decipher within what was real and what was right. not. Right. So is that why you're saying you need to be careful about the whole sword thing <clears throat> or things coming through that are not of light and of good? I think, like I say, okay, anything outside of you, 
you need to be careful of. And anything, let me put it like this. Well, I think anything outside of you that causes fear the Anakian, is not good. The Anakian language? Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. You're not going to a movie fearful. Mm-hmm. Okay? And the main character just mm-hmm. so happens to have something on their weapon. Mm-hmm. That's supposed to create amazement. Mm-hmm. You're not fearful of that either. Mm-hmm. You're focused on it. And whenever it's exalting adrenaline mm-hmm. from the main character, that's even more symbolic. Because yeah. when they're fighting, they're at their most powerful moment. And the reason those runes are on that weapon in the first place is because it's allowing them to tap into another resource that allows them to be stronger. It's like selling your soul to the devil. Right. I I hear what you're saying. You will be surprised if you watch Superwoman because it's not like that. She's all about love, all about peace. Wonder Woman. Yeah, did I say Superwoman? Summer, Superwoman was what Linda the frick is Lee. It? Okay. In 19, I think, 88? Yeah. yeah. Did I say Superwoman? Yeah, Probably did. five times. I meant Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. You're not is getting a as deep as, in it as, as I am, I know. But but at the same mm-hmm. and I don't think a lot of people will, but I really do. You said deep. Well, talk- <laughs> I know, but what I'm saying is this is your children's future. Mm hmm. And you really need to be watching what they're looking at. And, and you you may not pick up on the fact of something on their weapon, but that's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> to let us know. To let I'm us know. Honest. I mean, it's true, though. I yeah, mean, my- I, I hear what you're saying. It, it's very interesting that there's so many, and maybe just, this is just a, a phase we're going through <laughs> right now. You know, this well, is the end thing with all the superheroes. Yeah. I mean, how many Spider-Man movies come out? Well, I'm gonna tell you another little different interesting tidbit. Batman's and X Men. I'm gonna tell you another little interesting but, tidbit with this. But Wonder Woman is cool. Okay. Everyone. Okay, go ahead. The movies, the show Stargate. Mm-hmm. You know what just so happens to be around this whole damn Stargate? Uh, I'm sure you're about to tell me what. Runestones. Mm. Those symbols around the Stargate. Mm-hmm. Same thing that's on their weapons. Okay. Interested yet? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, what, we're gonna walk through uh, water, right? And basically go into another dimension completely uh-huh. in the Stargate show, but yet, you know, the Transformers are fighting with a sword that has the same interest on it. Mm-hmm. Wonder Woman's fighting with a sword that has the same interest on it. What I'm trying to tell you people is that anybody that thinks aliens aren't real, they're very much real, and not only are they real. But they're communicating with you, and you have no idea. You don't even realize it. This is, but I don't believe this is something we need to walk around worrying about all day long. No, I don't think it's something we need to worry about. It's right. something you need to be aware of. It's it's it's, in, it's information if you want to take it or not. It's whether you, you know. It's something we're going to force you to believe. I'm gonna call them the powers that flee because mm-hmm. all they do is is put information in your face to subconsciously mess with you and literally they run away because they're scared because the majority of the people if they found out the truth mm-hmm. we would kick their ass mm-hmm. they're definitely afraid of those people mm-hmm. so that's why I call them the powers that flee because if anything ever happens they've already taken enough of your money to make underground silos and places to live that literally we we probably couldn't even figure out where they are on the ground they could probably live there for another you know, sixty years. You never know. Well, yeah, I, I mean, you know, I can tell you where they're located. Okay. <laughs> but no, I mean, Kevin gets into this. I'm yeah, just curious I mean, what I'm saying it. is, um, people need to be aware of mm-hmm. this shit because it's true. Yeah, it really is true. Well, I mean, when I you look at it's true, you say that it's true. I'm not sure. Well, well, it, it could be. It's a okay. good possibility. I, well, the only way it's not a possibility. Mm-hmm. You're gonna make me go and like find these pictures of the of the uh, of the actual um, no. like, <laughs> like okay. There's a show called Man at Arms. Mm-hmm. They rebuilt the sword of Optimus Prime. Mm-hmm. They rebuilt the sword of Wonder Woman. If you think this is not real, go watch the episodes on YouTube of Man at Arms when they rebuilt Optimus Prime's sword get to the end and the guy goes right now we're engraving the runes on the sword mm-hmm. he actually says it in, in the in the video and he's sitting there writing it 
how does he know what the runes are? How does he, who gave him the instruction to put that on the sword? That's what I think about. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Because the way that they sp- they say is that everything that we will do mm-hmm. will be put in the forefront for you to see. Okay. Hmm. That's the way that they speak. Mm-hmm. Okay. And everything mm. that they do is put in the forefront for you to see. But if you're stupid, that ain't their problem. Yeah. It's kind of like saying, hey, no trespassing, but if you walk on my property, I'm going to shoot you. Mm-hmm. Same shit. Got it. Got it. So I'm just being honest. Yeah, that's good. That's, that's information that a lot of people might be interested in. So, um, where's all your magazines? I threw them away. Do you think people still look at magazines? I really don't. I mean, what do, what do you think they use them for, if anything? Because I think most people... Kindle. Gener- Kindle. <laughs> I think most people. No, just, I think most people just read, get their information off the internet now. I, I uh, think and, that and via email. Well, I mean, you I can mean, just. I, I think the majority of the world today gets a lot of their information off of YouTube and Fire Sticks. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. And I mean, all Kindle is is a Fire Stick, mm-hmm. too. So, like, think about it. Like, you know, you got all these magazines. When you pick up a magazine, why do you pick up a magazine? I pick up a magazine if I'm in a long ass line in the grocery store mm-hmm. and I'm bored. And, and what there's do you like look a good at? cover. Whatever the cover is. I like know, but that's w- it. Really? Just the gossip. Just the scoop. And the, I'm the done. Gossip? Mm-hmm. Okay. Don't even get me started on that. Which is but, not something I like, but if it's <laughs> the gossip. If it entertains me for two seconds I'm good and then well, I move on. Okay. The scoop. You know, so and so is in Hollywood. Is blah blah blah. Oh, okay, what's that's interesting. F- really, I just look at the pictures. What's funny to me mm-hmm. is that you know you might have thousands of magazines. You may have only looked at it because somebody was had a picture in it, and that's it. Or your mama's cousin had a picture, or your mama's grandma had an article. You don't look at anything else, you know. To mm-hmm. me, they don't flip through the whole magazine. They looking at they looking at gossip is what they want, and, and gossip apparently is like the big thing today. It's been the big thing forever. Yeah, which means that you're really never gonna look at anything that has meaning because you're always looking for bullshit. That's it. So, and if you're looking for BS, you'll find it. Just like if I tell oh, you, you right now, you find that everywhere. Look at red. You'll you'll look. You'll, you may see one or two things, and then I say look at it again. You'll find even more, and you'll even. Try to convince yourself that orange is red. If you want to find it, you can find it. That's my... Mm-hmm. That's what I'm trying to say. So, if our brain is really wanting mm-hmm. to attract that, we'll find it. Yeah, I think... I could put the most... Po- or someone can put the most positive post out there, and you'll get a few likes yeah, or right. a little bit of attention. You put something negative out there, and it's a whole different ball game. A lot more attention. So, yeah, what does that I mean, say? Look, everybody has their purpose. I, I guess you could say, you know, with this situation. But I mean, I mean, to me, magazines are supposed to be informative. But you know, t- today I don't think they're very informative as as they used to be. Mm. I think you might get one article that might be mm. informative. Um, but I mean, I don't see people sitting around picking up magazines every day, especially not in Acadiana or where we live, or you know, on a regular basis because. I mean, the majority of it, you know, gets burned mm-hmm. somewhere. Mm-hmm. Or used for a vision board, like you said. <laughs> I know, but like, if you're picking up magazines mm-hmm. to make vision boards... Just go make a PowerPoint. You can do that. Well, Just go get your no, images I mean, off of um, I, I mean, the internet and throw it into a PowerPoint. There's your vision board. That, <laughs> that's just crazy. <laughs> I, I, I mean... I know, like, like, like. Let me flip through a hundred magazines so I can find a picture of a desk that I want. <laughs> like, that's that's what people do. <laughs> like, for real. Okay. <laughs> I know that. It's so, okay. And I, it it works sometimes. You think? Um, yeah. I mean, let me tell you, the brain does not know what's real and what's not. So imagination is powerful. But you can't 
watch and wait. Go, am I going to get a chair? Let me go look at my vision board. Oh, my God, the chair didn't come in. You just have to have a knowing. Just go. You put it out there. I, yeah. I mean, so today, the only real purpose for magazines is vision boards. That's it. <laughs> so thank you, magazine people. <laughs> Because we need something to use on our vision board. <laughs> yeah, come out with some good vacation stuff. So, yeah. I'm okay. sorry. This so is, we talked about aliens. Hilarious. We talked about swords. We talked about superheroes. We talked about magazines, vision boards. And we well, talked about I want to clarify awesome people. One, one thing. Mm-hmm. If you go look up rune stones, make okay. sure you look up Anakian. Because rune, rune stones would not exist without Anakia. Because it's really what it is. Um, I don't want people going into the the folklore world going, oh my god, uh, the Hobbit has got all this crazy, you know, writing in it and stuff. Mm-hmm. But, you know, J.R. Tolkien and all these guys that wrote these books, Lord of the Rings and all these things, they all stated that, the you know, that they did receive a lot of the information from the Akasha. Mm-hmm. So... It's the same thing John T and them were doing. <laughs> they were tapping into those resources, like finding that information. So, like, it makes sense. Mm-hmm. You know, there's there's a reason these things are in our movies today. Yeah. So Kevin's mentioned it's in the book a few times. That's to research for the book, and some of y'all might be wondering, what is the book? the The book is a collection mm-hmm. of 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 interdimensional resources that we can't see mm-hmm. with the human eye. Okay. So, the book is something that was worked on about a year ago. Yeah. Yeah, a year ago, actually. Wow. Yeah, it's, um, it's definitely the hardest thing I've ever done. Mm Mm-hmm. And it is about to be going to the public. Well, it's it's pretty much in its final stages stages of being checked for grammar and, Mm -hmm. you know, these amazing people who like to tell you things like, hey, you missed an apostrophe. Wrong. You know, yep. Like that, that, that whole world out there that yeah. catches that. You know, It's amazing that people can catch a there, a there, and a there. T-H-E-I-R. And a, but they can't catch the fact that somebody's lying to them. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. It's true, it. though. Isn't that, isn't that true? It is like, true. I find that really funny. But I still do believe spelling is a is a is a is an awesome thing. You know, I I think you should spell properly. Yeah. You know, that's yours and your man. That one can bite somebody but you, in the butt. But isn't that true? Like they'll stand there and fight mm-hmm. to the death mm-hmm. for that. All right, really, with people that say things like "it grinds my gears," like people that say that, really, like that's the people you need to be careful of too. Grinds my gears. It yeah. grinds my gears. What word do you have the most? Challenge with is there a, when, that one word? I don't have a lot of challenge with a whole lot of stuff, unless you get me talking about something, and yeah. I just happen to care about it at the moment. Yeah. I, don't, I don't, I don't really go around looking for problems. Yeah, I go around looking for beautiful things like flowers. That's and, what, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, like you know, people probably think I'm crazy when I get online and I start, you know, well, taking if, pictures if they of look flowers. at your pictures, they'll know that it comes from a, a peaceful and a loving place. Yeah, I don't ever go out mm-hmm. with a camera looking for garbage. Mm-hmm. I can tell you that. I mean, you know, I don't ever do that every any day of the week. Mm-hmm. I mean, inside, I'm I'm super happy. Mm-hmm. Really, I am. Beautiful. I'm not. I don't. You know, I would rather show somebody like a picture of me living my life. To me, is not important. Because that's me. I'm living my life. Mm-hmm. If I can show you why I'm living my life, to me that's more important because it may inspire somebody to do the same I thing. I love it. The, that's it. Does that make sense? It I makes mean, total sense. I mean, to me, that's the real inner beauty. Of it is. Sh- you know, sharing somebody saying, hey, um, this is what I'm looking at. Mm-hmm. And this is why I think I'm I'm sh- I'm showing you because I want you to experience it too to to have some kind of view of it. Mm-hmm. Like I've had people tell me all the time, man, you should have really put a logo on that picture. You 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 should have you know sold that picture. You know I can't sell everything. I'm not gonna die. I'm not, well, you know if I'm not here anymore. You know I mm-hmm. I, I can't just everything I do go. Hey, I want to sell this. Mm-hmm. 
I have to kind of show you something that I'm doing, you know. But that's why you don't see me thousands of pictures of me. I don't care. Yeah, you're I'm, not in any pictures. Um, I would much rather show you what I'm seeing so you would A, want to go experience it for yourself, or B, maybe wake up one day and go, you know what, I'm going to I'm gonna go out and and I'm going to find something beautiful today. If, yeah. I, if I can't do that, then I'm going to go again and that's find something. That's a great way to shift shift your energy or shift your yeah, thoughts I mean, or your emotions and I love it because if we can all have that intention every morning when we wake up to be in a beautiful state be in a beautiful place your day's gonna yeah, just even feeling unfold sick unfold that way you know if you wake up and you want to go find something beautiful trust me you can in this world there's something beautiful every day that you wake up just the fact that you woke up Mm-hmm. But to walk outside and go, man, that really is pretty. And I, I, I think that people that say they can't do this, chances are they're probably the ones that are online bitching. It, yeah, absolutely. But, but, you know... They are addicted to suffering. Well, they And that's unfortunate. I, I, you know... I mean, there's a way out of that, everybody. I think they should buy a camera. Mm-hmm. And the reason why I say that is because before I ever bought a camera, you know, you have I a might phone. Have, it's easy. You, you have know, a phone and your camera. No, you need to look through the lens. Okay. If you can't look through the lens, don't buy it. You know, to me, it doesn't matter. You don't need an expensive one. You could buy the cheapest one, but make sure you have a lens that you can look through. Mm-hmm. Because when you're forced to look through something, you're forced to focus. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter if you're ADD or not. Mm-hmm. If you think that you're ADD, you really need a camera. Mm. And the reason I'm saying that is because when you are looking with one eye through something, and you have to physically use your mind to in your body to focus on it, you can't think of anything else at the moment. You're forced to focus. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's why I think the camera is so important with teaching people about how to focus because you're forced to Mm -hmm. you know it's not something from the out it is something from the outside but at the same time you are having to use you to to make it work nice nice so i like that and i'm gonna give you an example you can look at a flower in your front yard every year it comes out you know the lily will bloom Easter is is the time that I think about because it's always amazing Mm -hmm. because you you see new buds every year. So whenever you go outside and and you see that a flower, until you look through a lens at how it looks and how to focus on it and get really close up on it, you will never experience how beautiful it really could be. And when you do, it makes you want to go find another one. Yeah. And... I think that that is really the natural cure for ADD and a lot of other problems that we have. I mean, you do a lot of cloud pictures, which you got me into kind of taking pictures of pretty sunsets now, or maybe paying attention to it, stuff that I used to just take take for granted. But just look up in the sky and look at the beauty of of the clouds and the formation. Clouds are the fastest thing mm-hmm. you will ever photograph. Mm-hmm. Um, if you don't believe that, challenge yourself because when you're looking through a lens, I can assure you, you will realize how fast they are because you you you'll see it one second and, and like literally it's gone. But it makes you kind of think about the physics of life. So when a cloud is forming and it moves, like when you can, if you actually visualize what it's like up there, we're talking. 75 to about 160 miles per hour of just movement Mm -hmm. you know um if you can find some of these like uh videos where you you see like the stills and they're 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 slowly there and they they just keep the camera there and then they uh, what's it called it's like fast frame it's and then they speed it up and they show you the movement of the clouds as as they're rolling through if you if you look at that and then you go shoot clouds It'll give you a respect that you have to be fast. Um, but that's what I did when I was younger. That's all I did. I mean, it's, it's probably strange, mm-hmm. but 
there were two things that helped me with photography more than anything in this planet and and one of them was when I was punished I would always go and lay on a bed and instead of thinking about what I did mom Mm -hmm. I would look at the ceiling fan blades Mm -hmm. and I would focus my mind to follow one of the blades in a circle and they always go from from left to right in a circle so yeah. like whenever i would go and look at the ceiling fan i would focus on one blade and i would constantly just follow that one for about 15 minutes and it and i it had to have done something to my brain to where literally i was able to project something yeah that's interesting huh but that's what I did. I mean, year, you dizzy? years of being punished. <laughs> that's that's what I learned. That's so, awesome that you could do that. You could find entertainment in a in a ceiling fan. Well, I used to think it was interesting. So, like, mm-hmm. literally, I would turn the knobs down. If you can't do it right away, don't get pissed off at yourself. Turn this, turn the <laughs> turn the gain down, and like you know, like to the first level. Yeah. And try it there, and then the faster you get, the faster your rap your your brain will process. Mm-hmm. Um, and That's I, very cool. Well, I think that it's a it's a tr- it's something people don't know because they don't they don't you don't hear people <laughs> they don't get about punished this. anymore. Well, no, they're always in time out looking in a corner. You know, the best thing I think mm-hmm. ever happened to me was I was you know creative enough to be bad. Yeah. And then you know I would get punished, and <laughs> I'm, I'm, it's true because we talk about this all the time. Like mm-hmm. last show, we talked about this with the presidents. Yeah. I learned so much about the presidents because you had to write about them. They used to make me write the states, capitals, <laughs> and population. Like, just learn from this. They, I'm serious. <laughs> Fifth grade, this dude named Mr. Bird. I'll never forget this big, big, six foot, mm-hmm. eight tall dude. And literally, he, he states, capitals, populations, fifty times. I used to have to write that all the time. That was like the best thing they ever did to me. Mm-hmm. Really? <laughs> well, I mean, it served a That's purpose. That's why they always sure. say you never know what's going to happen, but because, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like I do. they go, I, you, you might hate it at the time, but you'll wind up realizing that it's the best thing that you ever did. There's always a gift in it. There's always a gift in it's everything. It's true. Really, there is. And I mean everything. Detention. Detention mm-hmm. was the best thing that ever happened to me. Mm hmm. Because it made me pay attention. Mm hmm. Yep. Really? Yeah, so. When you think about it, it's kind of true. Yeah, don't be scared to punish your kids. It's yeah. okay. And you find other people who are just as creative as you, and the world's telling them, stop. That's what's funny to me. You know? I know. It's true. I know. Oh, my gosh. I remember one dude in detention. Um, he he looked like Robert Smith from The Cure. Like, he was the mysterious dude. Is that, that all the, the chicks, singer? The chi- Is that yeah, the singer, yeah, the guy yeah. with the black hair? Okay. He had the black Doc mm-hmm. Martens and stuff. Yeah. And like, all the chicks kind of thought he was cool like, because I kind of liked him but, but that's, I didn't know his but, name but no I'm talking about the dude in school like like he was he, oh, the he was the mysterious school. dude not that the dude wore, in Cure no okay <laughs> the dude that wore black wore black Doc Martens and you know he, he never really talked to people mm-hmm. he was always in detention though but you could tell he was just like chilled out dude yeah probably smoked weed every day and just mm-hmm. like chilled out and had some Doc Martens so people judged him for it mm-mm Really? Yeah, yeah. Uh, wow. So, so back to looking at fan blades. With, uh, yeah, I mean, we're all over the place. But no, but just it, hang in there, because we always have a good message that we come around well, to. Well, I, I think we did learn quite a bit. I mean, because when I start talking about some of this photography stuff, people, like, kind of zone in sometimes. Yeah. And they're like, really? Because yeah. I can tell you right now, the other thing that helped me with photography mm-hmm. was shoot, shooting a shotgun and a, and a rifle. Yeah, I could. I I can see how that would work because of the focus. And um, police officers that have problems with post traumatic stress disorder, go get a camera. Go get your ass a camera, dude. Because I'm telling you, if you have you, years yeah, of if shooting you ha- targets. If you are um, suffering right, right now with um, with some type of sadness, anything um, or anything, if you can't get your thoughts straight, <laughs> call me first. But and then go get a camera or do both. I'm telling you the mm-hmm. truth. The, I mean, a, cure, a, a camera with a, a lens that you could look through, the lens, and Okay, focus. give us a good brand camera. Do you have any recommendations? I, I mean, does it, it even it matter? It matter. probably it, doesn't don't matter. Don't buy a camera with a big LCD lens that you're looking at the LCD lens. That's all i got to say. Mm-hmm. Look through the lens. Stop looking at the screen. You, you do that enough, and you're programmed to do the wrong stuff on TV all the time. 
pick something up that you don't have to be programmed to do and you go focus through a lens Mm -hmm. and make something work for you you know stop letting everything be worked on uh, to get to you because that's really what they're doing that's all it it is but when you go outside and it's amazing that dirt when you focus on it it's so you know it's so clear clear that literally it's like oh my god that's a beautiful picture of dirt yeah i used to get fascinated with leaves on trees that well, was my thing if you go focus I, I spent on a lot of time outside the, the as thing a kid. Of, the thing about it is, mm-hmm. is it doesn't matter what you focus on it really does not you can go focus as long on as it anything. gives you some type of beauty inside some type of beautiful state when when i show someone on a prime lens, like these prime, there are prime lenses and then there are other mm-hmm. lenses that do autofocus. Mm-hmm. Take it off of autofocus and use manual focus, but try to get something that you can do a, a rotating focus with on a prime lens. Like they make these prime lenses, like say 35 millimeter, and you have a focus where you physically have to take your hand and focus on it. Mm-hmm. That's the, if you do that, you'll be hooked forever. And especially when you realize that you can do it. Mm-hmm. The, the biggest thing. I think that's why I think children should all have a camera. You want to show a child that he is creative. I'm so tired of these parents going, "Oh, my kid can't do that." Yeah, I got my son a video camera. Those are not even popular anymore. But he, I mean, he does all kinds of awesome things with it. But you know what I'm saying? Like, like, yeah, let them let them build on that right their right brain. That's where all the creative juice. That's where. all the good stuff comes from. And, well, Let them be creative. Well, use their whole brain and actually Don't worry about physically math. use the camera and mm-hmm. then be creative at the same time. That's using your whole brain. Yeah. So you can be technical and creative at the same time. Yeah. You know? There's a purpose for both. But I don't care what it is. You know, Canon's the opposite of Nikon. I use Nikon. I uh, like Nikon. Right. Um, You know, but I don't care what you're using. Just make sure... It has a lens that you can look through. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, because when you are a child, the first thing that you're given is that little thing with the little thing on the side. What's it called? Those the mobile? No, or those what? those things where you put the disc in and it, you hit the button and it it goes to another scene. Okay. Hmm. You don't remember those things? I had three kids. I'm you trying. put you you had one when you were a kid. Oh, are you talking about things that you'd look yes. at? Yeah, yeah, the round. Yeah, I did. It's like a virtual reality That's deal. So cool. But today it's like a whole nother level Is with it? a screen and everything. Yeah. So you're getting like EMFs like straight to the brain. Oh. Yeah, it's awesome, people. Mm. So like literally, like we need to scale back with so, technology. Well, basically, like you know, when you're flipping through, mm-hmm. you're fascinated at what you're looking at, even though you literally have seen it a thousand times. Same thing with a camera. You're looking through the scope, mm-hmm. and you're focusing more. And then at that point, when somebody saves money for a lens, you know they love it, you know, because right. and, and they're not going to sit there and, and beg somebody to do it. They're mm-hmm. going to figure out a way to do it because they want to see more creative creative things, mm-hmm. you know. The best thing you could ever do for your child, I'm telling you. Buy them a camera that they can actually visually see through. Because and let them go play outside. I mean, I, I, it, get them away from the video games. Get yeah. them away from even you too much YouTube. If it, well, I don't want to. Ju- I, I don't want to. You know, YouTube. I it, think if it's if it's healthy, but if it's um, an obsession where they're spending all their time and they're not interacting with family or friends or do and they get agitated and they're real moody, that's probably a sign they need to move on and do something else. A different activity. Too much of anything is probably too not a good anything. thing. But I'm gonna be honest with you. Too much of a of taking pictures. I mean, eventually you do have to edit them mm-hmm. or look at them. So you know, it's not too much of something. It, I, I think a camera is a device that literally is the only device mm-hmm. that has not been changed to the point where literally it's an obsessional. It, it can be an obsession, but mm-hmm. you have to eventually go look at what you did. Yep. It might be the only last device. Huh. From back in the day, from you know eighteen hundreds yeah. to today, that they can't make program hmm. to program you. Mm-hmm. It's actually the only device I think that may actually be able to help you. Huh. When you think about it. Yeah. Okay. So, 
So um, now we're going to talk about what the show is. We were supposed to talk about an hour ago. Yeah. We decided that today's show would be about energy vampirism. Vampirism. Um. <laughs> I'm on that. Well, you you can go first. Or me. It's okay. yeah. Yeah. I think um. You know who we surround ourselves with on a daily basis or on a regular basis, whether we want to believe it or not, really affects our moods, our emotions, um, our thought process, our beliefs. Um, so you need to really be careful about who you bring into your inner circle. And a lot of these people that drain us just so happen to be our family. <laughs> and that makes it difficult. I get well, it. You know, to me, mm-hmm. an, an energy vampire is somebody that, you know, I always say, give them three chances. That's it. If if you get around somebody and you literally are drained and you can't go anymore, because you know, sometimes they might not be an energy vampire. They might just be like literally like going 100 miles an hour. They're not trying to take your energy. Like, you know, but I don't are, think anybody's, tr- most people are no, not they, trying to take your energy. In energy they, they don't know all yeah, that I just don't believe that but maybe I, I, who you knows? don't want to believe it trust me they are <laughs> I don't focus on it but it's possible who knows I'm open minded to you know consider anything however there are people that do take your energy okay whether they they're doing it on purpose or not who knows um, and you can it. always tell yeah. by your mood after you finish talking to them or being around them you can even feel it if you can feel their energy without even talking. And some people can feel energy more than others, okay? Let's call it empath. We can get into that another time. Well, so, Speaking of empaths, mm-hmm. it doesn't mean you have a superpower, people, okay? You could just feel energy. It just so happens to mean that, you know, you cleared some of your bullshit and, you know, you don't have to go around going, hey, I want to heal you because you can't. Mm-hmm. You are not supposed to be healing anybody if you do you're going to take on that person's karma so i'm just letting you know as a warning if you feel like i am a person that has to go around protecting and healing Uh everybody i'm telling you right now if you start digging into that source without Mm -hmm. you know with them you you absolutely can't take on their negative energy so just letting you know that first and foremost right so i've had some arguments with people about i'm an empath and i'm i'm a, I'm a superhero well that's just them finding their significance some people really need to chill out with that mm-hmm. they really do so find some super positive people but you have to be positive yourself because you're not going to attract that so whatever you want to attract you need to be you need to become and be careful who you hang around with or who you bring into your reality on a daily basis. Well, I mean, how about just, like, focus on being happy first. And if you figure that somebody comes around you and you're not happy anymore, you might want to consider thinking that maybe, you know, there's a problem there. Yeah, it, you can always tell by what you're attracting. Yeah, because... If you have a lot of people that bitch, gossip, um, that bring you down, it's a mirror. I hate to say this, but it's a mirror. So check your mirror. Yeah. And we mirror what we are. I, I'm I'm being I, I I'm being shown to talk about a situation mm-hmm. because I, I, okay, it's a fine line with energy vampires. Okay, there's energy vampires that really really do go out there and try to find energy. They will look for the brightest light in the room. And literally, they won't even talk to you. They will literally try to take your light. Okay? Mm-hmm. I'm telling you the truth, even so, though you don't want to believe it. Well, no, I'm, I'm going to be open-minded and, okay. and listen to you. And you, I'll have some questions. You can literally not even have a conversation with this person. And they literally... I, if they I don't doubt there's it, people like that. I just don't think the majority of people do this. I don't think the majority of people know the right, same way that people don't want to see runestones on a damn weapon, mm-hmm. same exact thing. Now, there are people 
who see runestones on the weapon, and I promise you, they know how to take your energy. Mm -hmm. I guarantee it. Mm -hmm. Because I think this knowledge, that's why I think people should know more about this, Mm -hmm. because they would be able to protect themselves. How would you protect yourself? Well, number one. If you knew that there was somebody like that in the room. I mean, basically, you have to live almost in sacred space. I mean, so if you live in sacred... How would you describe sacred space? Well, I mean, the only way people are going to understand it on this program, mm-hmm. the majority of people that have ever been to church, mm-hmm. you know, you go to church and the priest creates sacred space around the altar mm-hmm. before he, he actually does a, a small ritual mm-hmm. about the body of Christ. Mm-hmm. The thing I got a problem with is he don't do it around the whole church. So mm-hmm. the people that are not in that space are standing before him doing a ritual and they're not in sacred space Mm -hmm. i don't like that Mm -hmm. i think it's crazy actually but you know people don't don't know Mm -hmm. you know i think that if people did question they would take the extra mile to explain to these people what they're doing and if they ever really explained it i think some people wouldn't show up but at the same time you know they're all supposed to be there for a positive purpose, and I think that a lot of people are not on under, on the same understanding deeper on a deeper meaning of what it all means. Okay, so that's what a priest does. What would what would you do if you were creating sacred space? I mean, basically, I would just you know do the same thing they're going to do to try to drain my energy. I'd visualize my own sacred space. That's all you do is visualize. Well, I mean, you can also visualize yourself being in cased into that you know own your own personal space yep. period i mean but do your own research because everybody's different here man everybody nobody's from the same place here mm-hmm. okay like mm-hmm. we're all different we're all unique people and that, that's the and one that's thing okay. about it that i think that is probably the most awesome and people at that point you get 17 people that that study sacred space and you go how do you do it and they all talk about it. Right. And they're not like, oh, well, he's trying to steal my sacred space uh, way. Wow. That's what I think we're supposed to be doing here. Mm-hmm. Combining our efforts as humans mm-hmm. to learn more. Right. I just got a message from eBay. Um, so, do you know what I'm saying? You need to check it. That's really what I think we're supposed to be doing here. Yeah. I you mean, know? one thing that I do is just I visualize kind of a, a green light or a white bubble around me Mm -hmm. and especially when i'm doing an event are you doing that now no i'm not okay you can get as close (laughs) (laughs) you can come sit right here (laughs) or a white light or a bubble like and so that's my energy that's my space you know there's people that come up to you like right in your face and talk okay that's a little bit too much for me i like my space so i'll do that especially if i know somebody like, you know, there's individuals that come up. I'll yeah. just create that space around me. And they'll get uncomfortable if they come you too wanna, close to that bubble. You want to make sure they're not trying works. to take your energy? Whenever they get real close to you, go, excuse me for a second. Can you take a step back, please? Mm-hmm. They will not even consider taking your energy at that point. Because mm-hmm. you've just created the sacred space. Mm-hmm. And you've told them, back the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. So that's, <laughs> so that's my trick. I just, I do that. Um. Oh wow! Yeah, what's up with those people that get too close in your face? I think that some of them are you like the, that. I, by the way, I, I don't know. I might be. <laughs> I don't think I ever get that excited. I don't excited. think you are. No, I. I mean, no, I don't really care to get too. Oh, it makes me uncomfortable, face. and so I might have like a, a space mm-hmm. issue. I don't know. So I'll kind of take a step back, and I'll get. Does my breath? Does my breath stink? Oh, I'm like, no, no. Too close. Are you serious? I don't yeah, ever. I'll think get that. that. I don't uh, ever think that. What, that your breath stinks yeah, if I take that's a not step? Some people I ever think get about. paranoid and they think that. And mm-hmm. I'm like, no, it's just, it's a little too close. Mm-hmm. Back it up. I bet when you take a picture, you put your, all, your, your hand on your hip too and everything. I do. I uh, think people just uh, saw my pictures and they got it from me. Mm-hmm. I totally put those hands on the hips. Oh, <laughs> thank God you're on the other side of the desk. Put your hands on the hip and don't worry about it. <laughs> but no, I, I, when I see it, but it, it's so obnoxious when I see like seven women standing together and they all do it. Oh, if it makes them feel good. I'm like, so dude, what? For real. So what? If they feel good, so what? That's how they're tapping okay. into their stuff. All right. Their good source. Fine. Fine. Put your hand on your hip. I just want to see a bunch of dudes. <laughs> and if you get it. nervous around somebody and you have an alpha person, 
Mm -hmm. Just put, throw those hands on the hip. Mm -hmm. Now, you don't want to do it where you're coming across too intimidating. Just kind of do it naturally. Not well, like you're about to beat the crap out of him. No, I mean, some of it is just like... Like this? I I don't believe a for a second... Away. I really mm -hmm. don't believe for a second that the hand on the hip thing means what y'all think it does. Who knows? Everything can be challenged, okay? Okay. Who knows? Well, I, I think it means that y'all think that y'all arms look a certain way and y'all want it to look a different way. That's, that's not it. That's what I Maybe think. Maybe it is. I don't think that's what it is. Of this is. Oh, like they're trying to disguise mm -hmm. their arms like yeah, a different size? I really believe that's what it is. Oh, I didn't think of that. Who knows? I really believe that's what it is. That's not why I do so, it. What, just... what's, what's your name on a TED Talk? You're full of shit. I really believe that she took a couple of pictures and she was like, "Oh, I don't really like the way my arm looks like this." <laughs> no, so I think that I'm gonna, it. I'm gonna flex a little bit. It forces She's a me to flex my girl. arm. It forces me to flex my arm a little mm -hmm. bit. So I'm gonna put my arm on my hip. Yes, that's how it works. Um, but no, I mean, yeah, it's all part of the uh, female scheme that they really. We are they all want, scheming. That's they don't it. want men to find We're out their deep scheming. dark secrets. We're just stuff. hiding our our stuff too funny so yeah uh energy vampires you know who they are they're not bad people and it's just it's just a thing and if you're an energy vampire you can change it just you know <laughs> raise that vibration dude you could be on youtube mm -hmm. listening to a program and get drained and literally they can happen like that too it, yeah, it doesn't have to be around just people. It could be, mm -hmm. it's the news. You know who's, a, you know who's an energy vampire? Who? Rush Limbaugh. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my freaking goodness. Every time I hear that dude's voice, I like go, oh. I cringe. I know, I have somebody oh that I'm close God. to that listens just, to it, and I'm like, ah! Every time I hear, I, he's got to be an energy vampire. Every time, every time Bless I hear. Bless his heart, oh my God. You know? It, yeah, I mean... I, it, he may have a good message, who knows, but I can't handle it. This is going to be funny, but I bet his car smells like English leather. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I can see it. I can see I it. What kind of car Rush Limbaugh drives? I don't know. Let's think of someone else. I think, uh, for some That's reason, a good I, example, I, I, Kevin. I think of a Lincoln Continental. Mm-hmm. For some reason. Yeah. The whole... <laughs> You know, you talk to somebody that's bitching, and that's all they do when they talk to you is blah, 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 blah. Uh, move on. Move on. Let's just talk about some good stuff. It's okay. Every now and we have our, our stuff. You know, we need a friend. We need a friend? <laughs> we need a friend. Are you serious? And not, that's not going to be judgmental that we can just talk right. about stuff. And then, you know, move on. I don't, I don't, I mean. We all need friends. I we all guess. need somebody. Yeah. I'm cool. You're cool? Yeah. No, I mean, recently somebody bought me a plant. Mm-hmm. And it was my favorite plant. Was it lavender? Is no, that even a plant? No, what is that? No. <laughs> Lavender's not a plant. It's something that I think is a... I think is it, it a flower? It, I, well, it's a fragrance. It's fra well, where does it come from? I oh, we're know. getting off we're, track. We're, Go know. ahead. Like, Tell me like about I, your plant. I, I, I want to say it might come from plants. Mm-hmm. But I don't think lavender is like a plant you buy. I've never heard. I know white sage is a plant you buy. I'm going by a lavender plant. Okay, what's your plant? Um, I'm not gonna say that. Okay, but you, you know? got a plant. Yeah. Um. Is it legal? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm not smoking the plant. <laughs> this girl here. No, I mean seriously. Like, I'm 39 years old. Are you? Yeah. Oh my God, you, you're a baby. How okay. old you thought I was? Thirty-eight. <laughs> you said it true. Yeah, I'm a year older than she thought I was. That's right. I'm you just had a birthday. Okay. Okay. Go At ahead. Thirty-nine years old. I, I've, you know, no woman has ever bought me a plant, and it really, really mean. It, it, I don't know how to explain this, mm -hmm. but it really was awesome. Somebody, a woman bought you a plant? Is yes. that where it came from? Yes. Did you fall in love? Did you get a little... I'm still trying to figure out what... Did where, it make you feel good? about this? Because, like, literally, like, 
I have never... Nobody... Was it a big plant? A little plant? Just a plant? No. Like, what was significant about this plant that made you it feel good? It didn't matter if it's big or little or small or whatever. They bought you a plant? They bought me a plant. Who knew? Women, Not listen just a up. Plant. Buy your guy a plant. I'm going to be honest with you. It was the best thing anybody's ever bought me. No way. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. They you just know. bought you a plant. She bought me Who a plant. Knew? But we it's don't my think favorite you guys plant. like that. It's my favorite plant. Mm-hmm. Don't have a clue. Did she know that you like plants? I didn't know you like plants. She had no idea. Uh, Y'all don't know nothing about my plants. No. <laughs> you think I'm weird with rune stones? Come, come hang out with me at the plant garden. But she had not... You guys never had a conversation about plants. She was just no. intuitively... She was intuitive to know that maybe you would like that who knows yeah she she is like she is pretty damn intuitive I'm, I'm, right she don't i think she knows but she don't like to share too much yet. yeah that's but, cool though but honestly mm-hmm. i'm serious she put you on a cloud that's cool well i'm going buy a plant for my guy i'm telling you right now mm-hmm. <laughs> he's gonna be like what is this and then she bought me two of them she didn't just you buy, buy one. some golf clubs huh she bought two of them Two. Yeah. Nice. So I got, I have two plants, my mm-hmm. favorite plants, now in my possession. Wow. Okay, guys, I want to know, because I'm curious if mm-hmm. it's just Kevin or if it's a guy thing, if you, if a girl got you a plant that maybe you were talking to, if that would light you up or anything, comment. I want to know. I'm curious. And comment underneath this video or go to the yeah. Rock Louisiana I have to know this. website and, mm-hmm. and, and go ahead and uh, send us a message. Or like, tell us what's the maybe weirdest thing um, that made you feel good that a, a girl, or if you're a girl, you know, yeah. what did a guy what, give you? What is somebody, what's what is something, something different? that somebody Let's just say bought something you different. that, like, you know, because, mm-hmm. you know, we're not saying be materialistic here. We're saying... Right. What is something that you just knew mm-hmm. that the relationship was going to work? Yeah. You know? Because to be honest with you, like, I really think that the majority of our show should be about what, about relationships today. We could do that. Because, like, and then we could come into the alien world with it mm-hmm. a little bit. Because, like, literally, like, Kevin you know. likes aliens. How do you, like, 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 has anybody ever dated somebody and then all of a sudden they start talking about Star Wars or aliens and then it's like, uh. Gotta go. It's like, the, the needle <laughs> went. <"Rah." laughs> Gotta go. Like, I, I'm dying to hear these said stories. said the A word. I'm so dying to hear these stories. Because mm. the A word is actually a part of our website. So, like. Mm-hmm. To be honest with you, I think it's hilarious. Have you dated an alien? We want to hear from you, too. You know? <laughs> like, seriously. Or somebody that thought they were an alien. Yeah. Or somebody... Or, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think yeah. these are these are popular topics that people want to hear about. Sin, yeah, send us something funny or Yeah. Like, no, or I'm serious. Hey, you know what? I'll put you on the show. You can call, and you'll be on our next show. Absolutely. I, can, I have, I have That'll those, be fun. That, that technology and stuff in here. We could do that. You have that technology and stuff? Yeah. But no, awesome. I, I don't have a problem doing that at all. I think it's funny. Mm-hmm. I think it's great. Yeah. I think it would be a good Tell us about, I mean, tell us about some good stuff like that. Like, the funniest date, you know, first date, that was only a first date. Yeah. How did that happen? Did I mean, aliens bring you together? Or like, yeah, or maybe they... They have the whole catfish thing. Maybe their picture was a certain look, and they there were somebody else. Who knows? You know, Anything crazy? Another Let thing. Us know. Another thing. I'm gonna be honest with you. I might mm-hmm. bring somebody on the show mm-hmm. to talk about online dating today because we. I hear a lot of horror stories, mm. and I was gonna write an article about it. And I started talking to about four women about this, and mm-hmm. they told me some of the strangest stuff. I've ever heard in my life. I'm just my. To me, that's a energy vampire. Just. Well, I believe there's a lot of like. Energy I feel vampires like my energy is like. Yeah. Just thinking about all that. I believe that energy vampirism is is probably the most successful uh-huh. on online dating. Yeah. And be careful I, with that, guys. I'm not. Be careful judge with it, it, but just be careful with it. You know how scary. Uh, be look, really careful. I, I heard one story. That. Okay, the the female was there, Mm -hmm. and, like, literally, like, you know, she got a message from some dude. He was like, hey, how you doing? 
imagine this, right? Guys messaging you. Hey, how you doing? Like, Hi, how are you? Get- She's mm-hmm. like, Hi. And then out of nowhere, he starts writing a book. About- you can see the little bubbles going up. Yeah. And he's like, I'm pretty good. Uh, my name is so-and-so. I do this, I do this, I do this. And he sends like all this pa- six paragraphs of information. Yeah. And then out of nowhere, she's like, not says it. She doesn't say anything. And then he comes back with a whole nother paragraph of information. And then she still doesn't say anything. Now, keep in mind, she may be folding clothes. (laughs) She might have children and she might be actually being a good parent. She might actually be taking a shower. You never know. You never know. He but was losing his stuff. in the midst of 20 minutes, his mind wandered so much yeah. to think that it was a psychological problem for him uh-huh. that he started going, never mind, I have a girlfriend anyway. Oh. He started writing stuff oh, like yeah. that. Oh, yeah. I mean, I get that. I on was me. like, what? I got that on LinkedIn a few weeks ago. Somebody sent me a message and said, hey, how are you? And just politely, I said, I'm fine. Have a great day. And they kept on saying, oh, you're pretty, or you're blah, and then it kept going on, and then I would get, oh, I'm sorry to bother you, and then I wouldn't respond. Then it would go, another one would pop up, I'm so sorry to bother you. And then that, the next morning, I'm so sorry I bothered you. <laughs> I mean, it so went weird. on all week. That's weird. And I didn't respond, but it was like, I'm if, so sorry I'm bothering you, you and know, if, I'm if sorry this, that if, I took your time. If this has happened to mm-hmm. you, Let's talk about it. Like, seriously, send us a message, and I want to have a conversation about this. Because, to me, that's borderline serial killer. It's it's a sick person. To me, that's stay away, like, stay away. I'm like, wow. be careful. And if that is you, you need to get offline for at least two months. At all, and I would get off a of TV too. Just go come back to reality. Go take some pictures. Go, go get find a camera, a camera <laughs> and go find. Something that's beautiful. Don't go find a girl well, or a guy. Like, go find if you're anything. a girl and you're freaked out. Eat too. a hamburger. Yeah. That'd probably be the best thing you could do is eat a hamburger. <laughs> are you going to eat a salad? No, I'd eat a hamburger. Because <laughs> at least I know the hamburger yeah. is going to chill them out after they eat it. Right. Right. Well, man. I go buy some lotion too. Because you know they need some lotion. Go get some lavender. Get a plant <laughs> and get a... <laughs> but no, I just thought it was Get cool. a friend. We're coming back to the plant story. Okay. I, I just thought it was really probably the sweetest thing anybody's ever That's done. That's so sweet. Awesome. Because you can't buy me a damn thing. Because everything I have, I wanted and I bought it and, I, you know, right. I, I wanted it. Like, you literally, you know, and people say, you know, buy me a card. Or make me a car to write something. You, you, literally, to me, that's like the, awesome. Like if you wrote something, I think a card to me, best. and I physically had to read it, I think that's awesome. I think, but a plant, a plant. Oh my god! What if I got you a fish? I mean, because your little I fish is know. struggling. Uh, no, but you got to be careful with buying fish. Yeah. Because you don't know if that fish is going to get along with that. Somebody fish. needs to buy Kevin a fish. No. No, don't do it. No, okay. I'll buy my I own damn fish. Because <laughs> the, the one thing that's got, I already got my own crazy eco thing going over here, and like literally, if you buy the wrong fish, it might kill the other fish. You buy it. Uh, okay, uh, I was trying to help a brother out. No, you. I can go buy my own fish. <laughs> They're two bucks. And I might be the only dude who thinks <laughs> this is weird, but I think this is strange. When you go to PetSmart and you buy fish, mm-hmm. you have a twenty-four hour <laughs> return <laughs> policy. <laughs> I'm, I'm, don't like, do it. I'm dead serious. Like if you one dies, you can like go back and like say bring your dead fish and be like, oh, oh, I, or just it died. bring your alive fish and I'm freak like, him out even more. I mean, Here, I, I don't want under- it. I can understand if I was if I'm buying a a lion fish, you know, for salt water, but mm-hmm. like I don't think I'm gonna be returning some feeder fish, goldfish, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like really. Okay. Yeah. Well, awesome people. Thank you for hanging out with us. What it's been maybe an hour or so. Yeah. What did we learn today? Buy buy a camera. Buy a camera. Uh, buy watch. a buy, You might want to consider buying somebody a plant. Yeah, you might want to do that. But you, um, you, you also need, have you need to, to feel good about yourself yeah. all the time. Just tap yeah. into that. You. Everybody has access. Everybody's awesome. 
You're awesome. Um, yeah. And watch, you know, watch your energy and watch the people that you surround yourself with. Yeah. What? Just, you know, be yourself and be happy. Just be yourself. You know? Don't do, worry about do, comparing yourself to do, anybody else. Do, do what you feel that makes you happy. And if somebody buys you a plant, yeah. consider having sex. No, I'm just doing <laughs> find happiness there's no rules if you find happiness that's the key yeah i mean i I, but i I do think it's cool when somebody knows your favorite plant and they buy it for you oh my god whoever this girl is i need to meet her um that's so awesome no i mean it's just it's just interesting but it makes me think of other things like Uh this is how complicated apparently i am that i'm thinking this like when you buy someone a plant if it if what if it dies like how are they going to take care of things like, like like you know like if they have children or something like are yeah, they going to take care yeah. of the, the plant it's like that egg thing when you're in high school and mm-hmm. they make you have an egg and see how if it's going to yeah, crack they come back and they, maybe that's a test i want to see if if you're going to keep the plant alive girl let me tell you something so you can keep that the, relationship there's alive two things i was whatever put it is. on this planet to do mm-hmm. one of them was to be alive was to make things live okay there you go. I like that. High five, my man. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, awesome, guys. We'll talk about my plant history on another show. <laughs> yeah. But and, yeah. And a lot of other interesting things. So, And we'll talk more about the book. So y'all rock this weekend, and we'll be back in a couple of weeks. Thank you for listening to Kings of ADD. <laughs> 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 so, no, um, the king and the queen of yeah. ADD. No, um, y'all have a good week. Y'all have a good weekend and and have a good week and a half. Yep. <laughs> Happy July. <laughs> bye bye.